The Deccan Plateau is a large plateau in western and southern India. It rises to 100 meters (330 feet) in the north, and to more than 1,000 meters (3,300 feet) in the south, forming a raised triangle within the South Pointing Triangle of the Indian subcontinent's coastline. It extends over eight Indian states and encompasses a wide range of habitats, covering most of central and southern India. The plateau is located between two mountain ranges, the Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats, each of which rises from its respective nearby coastal plain and almost converge at the southern tip of India. It is separated from the Gangetic Plain to the north by the Satpura and Vindhya ranges, which form its northern boundary. The Deccan produced some of the major dynasties in Indian history including Pallavas, Satavahana, Vakataka, Chalukya, and Rashtrakuta dynasties, the Western Chalukya, the Kadamba dynasty, Kakatiya Empire, Vijayanagara and Maratha empires and the Muslim Bahmani Sultanate, Deccan Sultanate, and the Nizam of Hyderabad. Etymology Topic. The name Deccan is an anglicized form of the Prakrit word Dakan or Dakana, itself derived from the Sanskrit word Daksina meaning southern, as the Deccan Plateau is located in the southern part of the subcontinent, by Rishika. Topic. Extent Topic. The Deccan region has historically lacked an enduring geopolitical center, and has been defined in various ways. Geographers have attempted to define it using indices such as rainfall, vegetation, soil type or physical features. When considering physical features, it is taken to be the area bounded by the Narmada River, the Eastern Ghats and the Western Ghats. The 16th century historian Farishta defined Deccan as the territory inhabited by the native speakers of Kannada, Marathi, and Telugu languages. Richard M. Eaton 2005 also settled on this linguistic definition. Geography <laughs> 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 The Western Ghats mountain range is very tall and blocks the moisture from the southwest monsoon from reaching the Deccan Plateau, so the region receives very little rainfall. The eastern Deccan Plateau is at a lower elevation spanning the southeastern coast of India. Its forests are also relatively dry but serve to retain the rain to form streams that feed into rivers that flow into basins and then into the Bay of Bengal. Most Deccan Plateau rivers flow south. Most of the northern part of the plateau is drained by the Godavari River and its tributaries, including the Indravati River, starting from the western Ghats and flowing east towards the Bay of Bengal. Most of the central plateau is drained by the Tungabhadra River, Krishna River and its tributaries, including the Bhima River, which also run east. The southernmost part of the plateau is drained by the Kaveri River, which rises in the western Ghats of Karnataka and bends south to break through the Nilgiri Hills at the island town of Shivanasamudra and then falls into Tamil Nadu at Hajanakal Falls before flowing into the Stanley Reservoir and the Medar Dam that created the reservoir, and finally emptying into the Bay of Bengal. <laughs> Climate the climate of the region varies from semi-arid in the north to tropical in most of the region with distinct wet and dry seasons. Rain falls during the monsoon season from about June to October. March to June can be very dry and hot, with temperatures regularly exceeding 40 degrees Celsius. The Deccan Plateau is a topographically variegated region located south of the Gangetic Plains the portion lying between the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal and includes a substantial area to the north of the Satpura Range, which has popularly been regarded as the divide between northern India and the Deccan. The name derives from the Sanskrit Daksina south". The plateau is bounded on the east and west by the Ghats, while its northern extremity is the Vindhya Range. The Deccan S average elevation is about 2,000 feet (600 meters), sloping generally eastward. Its principal rivers, the Godavari, Krishna, and Kaveri, flow from the Western Ghats eastward to the Bay of Bengal. The plateau's climate is drier than that on the coasts and is arid in places. Although sometimes used to mean all of India south of the Narmada River, the word Deccan relates more specifically to that area of rich volcanic soils and lava-covered plateaus in the northern part of the peninsula between the Narmada and Krishna rivers. Having once constituted a segment of the ancient continent of Gondwanaland, this land is the oldest and most stable in India. 
The Deccan Plateau consists of dry tropical forests that experience only seasonal rainfall. On the western edge of the plateau lie the Sayadri, the Nilgiri, the Anamalai and the Elamalai Hills, commonly known as Western Ghats. The average height of the Western Ghats, which run along the Arabian Sea, goes on increasing towards the south. Anamudi Peak in Kerala, with a height of 2,695 metres above sea level, is the highest peak of peninsular India. In the Nilgiris lie Otakamand, the well-known hill station of southern India. The western coastal plain is uneven and swift rivers flow through it that forms beautiful lagoons and backwaters, examples of which can be found in the state of Kerala. The east coast is wide with deltas formed by the rivers Godavari, Mahanadi and Kaveri. Flanking the Indian peninsula on the western side are the Lakshadweep Islands in the Arabian Sea and on the eastern side lies the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the Bay of Bengal. The eastern Deccan Plateau, called Telangana and Rayalasima, is made of vast sheets of massive granite rock, which effectively traps rainwater. Under the thin surface layer of soil is the impervious grey granite bedrock. It rains here only during some months. Comprising the northeastern part of the Deccan Plateau, the Telangana Plateau has an area of about 148,000 square kilometers, a north-south length of about 770 kilometers, and an east-west width of about 515 kilometers. The plateau is drained by the Godavari River taking a southeasterly course, by the Krishna River, which divides the Pena Plain into two regions, and by the Pen Iaru River flowing in a northerly direction. The plateau's forests are moist deciduous, dry deciduous, and tropical thorn. Most of the population of the region is engaged in agriculture. Cereals, oilseeds, cotton, and pulses legumes are the major crops. There are multi-purpose irrigation and hydroelectric power projects, including the Pachampad, Bira Vanatipa, and Upper Penai Aaru. Industries located in Hyderabad, Warangal, and Kurnool produce cotton textiles, sugar, foodstuffs, tobacco, paper, machine tools, and pharmaceuticals. Cottage industries are forest-based timber, firewood, charcoal, bamboo products and mineral-based asbestos, coal, chromite, iron ore, mica, and kyanite. The Deccan Traps the northwestern part of the plateau is made up of lava flows or igneous rocks known as the Deccan Traps. The rocks are spread over the whole of Maharashtra and parts of Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh, thereby making it one of the largest volcanic provinces in the world. It consists of more than 2,000 meters 6, feet of flat-lying basalt lava flows and covers an area of nearly 500,000 square kilometers 190,000 square miles in west-central India. Estimates of the original area covered by the lava flows are as high as 1,500,000 square kilometers, 580,000 square miles. The volume of basalt is estimated to be 511,000 cubic km. The thick dark soil called silt found here is suitable for cotton cultivation. Topic: <laughs> Geology. Topic: the volcanic basalt beds of the Deccan were laid down in the massive Deccan Traps eruption, which occurred towards the end of the Cretaceous period between 67 and 66 million years ago. Some paleontologists speculate that this eruption may have accelerated the extinction of the dinosaurs. Layer after layer was formed by the volcanic activity that lasted many thousands of years, and when the volcanoes became extinct, they left a region of highlands with typically vast stretches of flat areas on top like a table. The volcanic hotspot that produced the Deccan Traps is hypothesized to lie under the present day island of Reunion in the Indian Ocean. Typically, the Deccan Plateau is made up of basalt extending up to Bhor Ghat near Karjat. This is an extrusive igneous rock. Also, in certain sections of the region, we can find granite, which is an intrusive igneous rock. The difference between these two rock types is, basalt rock forms on eruption of lava, that is, on the surface, either out of a volcano, or through massive fissures as in the Deccan basalts, in the ground, while granite forms deep within the earth, granite is a felsic rock, meaning it is rich in potassium feldspar and quartz. This composition is continental in origin, meaning it is the primary composition of the continental crust. Since it cooled relatively slowly, it has large visible crystals. Basalt, on the other hand, is mafic in composition, 
meaning it is rich in pyroxene and, in some cases, olivine, both of which are Mg Fe rich minerals. Basalt is similar in composition to mantle rocks, indicating that it came from the mantle and did not mix with continental rocks. Basalt forms in areas that are spreading, whereas granite forms mostly in areas that are colliding. Since both rocks are found in the Deccan Plateau, it indicates two different environments of formation. The Deccan is rich in minerals. Primary mineral ores found in this region are mica and iron ore in the Chota Nagpur region, and diamonds, gold and other metals in the Golconda region. Fauna <inaudible> 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 The large areas of remaining forest on the plateau are still home to a variety of grazing animals from the four-horned antelope Tetraceras quadricornis, Chinkara Gazella beniti, and blackbuck Antelope cervicapra to the large gaur and wild water buffalo Bubulus arena. Topic: People. Topic: The Deccan is home to many languages and people. Bhil and Gon people live in the hills along the northern and northeastern edges of the plateau, and speak various languages that belong to both the Indo-Aryan and Dravidian families of languages. Marathi, an Indo-Aryan language, is the main language of the northwestern Deccan in the state of Maharashtra. Speakers of Telugu and Kannada, the predominant languages of Andhra Pradesh, and Karnataka respectively, occupy those states' portions of the plateau. The city of Hyderabad is an important centre of the Urdu language in the Deccan, its surrounding areas also host a notable population of Urdu speakers. The Urdu dialect spoken in this region is also known as Dakini or as Dakani, named after the region itself. Northeastern parts of the Deccan are in the state of Odisha. Odia, another Indo-Aryan language, is spoken in this part of Deccan. The chief crop is cotton, also common are sugarcane, rice, and other crops. Apart from the states already mentioned, the state of Chhattisgarh is found in the northeast corner of the plateau. The large cities in the Deccan are Pune, the cultural hub of Maharashtra, Nagpur, the winter capital of Maharashtra, Bangalore, the capital of Karnataka and Hyderabad, the capital of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Other major cities include Mysore, Gulbarga and Bellary in Karnataka, Amravati, Kolhapur, Ladder, Nanded and Aurangabad in Maharashtra, Amaravati, Visakhapatnam, Kurnool, Kadapa, Anantapur, Vijayawada, Guntur, Rajamundri, Aluru, Kakinada in Andhra Pradesh, and Warangal, Karamnagar, Ramagundam, Nizamabad, Jamakunta, Mabubnagar in present Telangana. History Topic. The Deccan produced some of the most significant dynasties in Indian history like the Chola dynasty, Satavahana dynasty, Vakataka dynasty, Kadamba dynasty, Chalukya dynasty, Rashtrakuta dynasty, Western Chalukya Empire, Vijayanagara Empire and Maratha Empire. Of the early history, the main facts established are the growth of the Mauryan Empire 300 BC, and after that the Deccan was ruled by the Satavahana dynasty which protected the Deccan against the Scythian invaders, the western satraps. Prominent dynasties of this time include the Cholas 3rd century BC to 12th century AD, Chalukyas 6th to 12th centuries, Rashtrakutas 753 to 982, Hoysalas 10th to 14th centuries, Kakatiya 1083 to 1323 AD and Vijayanagara Empire 1336 to 1646. Ahir kings once ruled over the Deccan. A cave inscription at Nasik refers to the reign of an Abhira prince named Ishwarsena, son of Shivadatta. After the collapse of the Satavahana dynasty the Deccan was ruled by the Vakataka dynasty from the 3rd century to 5th century. From the 6th to 8th century the Deccan was ruled by the Chalukya dynasty which produced great rulers like Palaksi II who defeated the North India Emperor Harsha or Vikramaditya II whose general defeated the Arab invaders in the 8th century. From the 8th to 10th century the Rashtrakuta dynasty ruled this region. It led successful military campaigns into northern India and was described by Arab scholars as one of the four great empires of the world. In the 10th century the Western Chalukya Empire was established which produced scholars like the social reformer Basava, Vijñansvara, the mathematician Bhaskara II and Sumashwara III who wrote the text Manasalasa. From the early 11th century to the 12th century the Deccan Plateau was dominated by the Western Chalukya Empire and the Chola dynasty. 
Several battles were fought between the Western Chalukya Empire and the Chola dynasty in the Deccan Plateau during the reigns of Raja Raja Chola I, Rajendra Chola I, Jayasimha II, Someshvara I, and Vikramaditya VI and Kulatunga I. In 1294, Aladdin Khalji, Emperor of Delhi, invaded the Deccan, stormed Devagiri, and reduced the Yadava Rajas of Maharashtra to the position of tributary princes, see then proceeding southward to conquer the Andhra, Karnataka. In 1307, a fresh series of Muslim incursions led by Malik Kafir began in response to unpaid tributes, resulting in the final ruin of the Yadava power, and in 1338 the conquest of the Deccan was completed by Sultan Muhammad bin Tughluq. The imperial hegemony was brief, as soon Andhra and Karnataka reverted to their former masters. These defections by the Hindu states was soon followed by a general revolt of the Muslim governors, resulting in the establishment in 1347 of the independent Muslim dynasty of Bahmani. The power of the Delhi Sultanate evaporated south of the Narmada River. The southern Deccan came under the rule of the famous Vijayanagara Empire which reached its zenith during the reign of Emperor Krishnadevaraya. In the power struggles which ensued, the Hindu kingdom of Karnataka fell bit by bit to the Bahamani dynasty, who advanced their frontier to Golconda in 1373, to Warangal in 1421, and to the Bay of Bengal in 1472. Krishnadevaraya of the Vijayanagara Empire defeated the last remnant of Bahamani Sultanate power after which the Bahamani Sultanate collapsed. When the Bahmani Empire dissolved in 1518, its dominions were distributed into the five Muslim states of Golconda, Bijapur, Ahmednagar, Bidar and Barar, giving rise to the Deccan Sultanates. South of these, the Hindu state of Karnataka or Vijayanagar still survived, but this, too, was defeated, at the Battle of (1565) by a League of the Muslim Powers. Barar had already been annexed by Ahmednagar in 1572, and Bidar was absorbed by Bijapur in 1619. Mughal interest in the Deccan also rose at this time. Ahmadnagar was partially incorporated in the empire in 1598 and as fully in 1636, Bijapur in 1686, and Golconda in 1688. In 1674, Shivaji laid the foundation of the Maratha Empire which within 75 years of his death covered territory of over 250 million acres 1 million square kilometer or one-third of the Indian subcontinent. Marathas under Shivaji directly challenged the foreign rule of the Bijapur Sultanate and ultimately the mighty Mughal Empire. Once the Bijapur Sultanate stopped being a threat to the Maratha Empire, Marathas became much more aggressive and began to frequently raid Mughal territory. The Marathas had conquered part of central and western India by Shivaji's death in 1680. After Shivaji, Sambhaji defended the Maratha Empire from the Mughal onslaught led by Aurangzeb. Marathas defeated Mughals in the prolonged war. After 1707, the Marathas acquired the right to levy tribute in southern India. After the death of Chhatrapati Shahu, the Peshwas became the de facto leaders of the empire from 1749 to 1761, while Shivaji's successors continued as nominal rulers from their base in Sitara. The Marathas kept the British at bay during the 18th century. By 1760, with the defeat of the Nizam in the Deccan, Maratha power had reached its zenith. However, dissension between the Peshwa and their Sardars army commanders saw a gradual downfall of the empire leading to its eventual annexation by the British East India Company in 1818 after the three Anglo-Maratha Wars. A few years later, the Aurangzeb's viceroy in Ahmednagar, Nizam ul-Mulk, established the seat of an independent government at Hyderabad in 1724. Mysore was ruled by Hyder Ali. During the contests for power which ensued from about the middle of the 18th century between the powers on the plateau, the French and British took opposite sides. After a brief course of triumph, the interests of France declined, and a new empire in India was established by the British. Mysore formed one of their earliest conquests in the Deccan. Tanjore and the Carnatic were soon annexed to their dominions, followed by the Peshwa territories in 1818. In British India, the plateau was largely divided between the presidencies of Bombay and Madras. The two largest native states at that time were Hyderabad and Mysore. Many smaller states existed at the time, including Kolhapur and Sawantwari. After independence in 1947, almost all native states were incorporated into the Republic of India. Hyderabad refused to join, and was annexed by the Indian Army in Operation Polo in 1948. 
In 1956, the States Reorganization Act reorganized states along linguistic lines, leading to the states currently found on the plateau. Topic: <inaudible> Economy. Topic: The Deccan Plateau is very rich in minerals and precious stones. The plateau's mineral wealth led many lowland rulers, including those of the Mauryan 4th -2nd century BCE and Gupta 4th -6th century CE dynasties, to fight over it. Major minerals found here include coal, iron ore, asbestos, chromite, mica, and kyanite. Since March 2011, large deposits of uranium have been discovered in the Tamalapal Belt and in the Bhima Basin at Goji in Karnataka. The Tamalapal Belt Uranium Reserve promises to be one of the top 20 uranium reserve discoveries of the world. Low rainfall made farming difficult until the introduction of irrigation. Currently, the area under cultivation is quite low, ranging from 60% in Maharashtra to about 10% in Western Ghats. Except in developed areas of certain river valleys, double cropping is rare. Rice is the predominant crop in high rainfall areas and sorghum in low rainfall areas. Other crops of significance include cotton, tobacco, oilseeds, and sugar cane. Coffee, tea, coconuts, areca, pepper, rubber, cashew nuts, tapioca, and cardamom are widely grown on plantations in the Nilgiri Hills and on the western slopes of the Western Ghats. Cultivation of jatropha has recently received more attention due to the jatropha incentives in India. Gallery Topic. Topic. Notes. Topic. Topic. References. Topic. Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. India. Encyclopædia Britannica. 14. 11th ed. Cambridge University Press pp. 375–421. Richard M. Eaton 2005. A Social History of the Deccan, 1300–1761. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 9780521254375. External links Topic. Media related to Deccan Plateau at Wikimedia Commons Dynasties of Deccan